Hi, welcome to the first video tutorial of coding at home. I'm Alessandro and today I'm introducing the Explorer, a simple and amusing coding game that can be played here on the table or on the floor. But first of all, let me tell you something about the checkered board that you find here. I printed it from the web. Here it is, the original paper. And uh, as you can see, I had to cut it along the edges in order to obtain this one. But there is also another uh, sheet of paper that I printed out and I'll show it to you in a moment. But before moving ahead, I'd like to point out that you could use any other checkered board like this one, which is nothing but a grid drawn by a marker on a sheet of paper. The only rule, the, which is also the, you see, the common feature of this checkered board and this grid is that uh, it has to be a 5 by 5 grid. This means that we will uh, have 25 squares, 25 boxes in our checkered board. And this is very important for playing uh, our game, which is called the Explorer. So, let me take uh, the other sheet, which uh, has uh, a lot of uh, small footprints in uh, small squares. Or boxes and apparently they are all the same but they are not if you look at them carefully you can easily find that uh, the ones in the first three columns uh, are uh, oriented to the left while the ones in the three middle columns uh, are oriented straight forward while the um, the ones in the three columns to the right are oriented to the right. And then there is one more column that has no footprints but triangles and circles. To highlight the difference between the orientation, um, among the orientation of the footprints in the different tiles, let me use colors uh, and I'll uh, use uh, a yellow marker, this one, to color the footprints uh, in the first three columns. So I do it in this way. I'm trying to be quick, but I suggest you to color them more carefully and precisely. And uh, I'm not uh, coloring all of them, just uh, not to waste our time together. Then I use a gray marker to color the tree in the middle, in this way. Okay, and I should also color all the others in the same columns. And then I use a, a red marker to color the footprints oriented to the right. Here they are. Okay, let me move it a little bit. What about the last column? I'll use a light blue marker to color both triangles and surfers. Here they are. And now I have to cut them along the edges using scissors. So let's see. I cut them in this way. As accurately as possible along the edges. And once I cut into a direction, then in the other direction, I cut those tiles. Okay, I did it in advance in order not to waste time. 
and here is the result. I have a lot of grey, yellow and red tiles ready, ready to be used to play our game. But I also have the circles and the triangles. And I'll start by placing a triangle here. This triangle represents the starting point for the explorer. So this means that uh, at the beginning of the game I have to imagine, and you have to imagine, the explorer to be exactly here on this tile, oriented according to this kind of tip or arrow here. Okay? And then I place also another one of these light blue tiles, the one with a circle, representing a destination. Okay? The finishing position for the explorer. And now I have to use the tiles to build the path from the starting point to the finishing position. Okay? And the only rule that I have to follow is that the shape of the tiles have to fit. So if I take this tile, the only way in which I can use it in order to fit into the previous one is this one. Okay? So tiles have to be used as the pieces of a puzzle, basically. And at this point, I could uh, go straight again using a gray tile with straight footprints, or I can use at this point this kind of tile with yellow footprints representing the possibility of turning to the left. In fact, as you can see, every tile has an entrance point and an exit point. And uh, in case of a grey tile, the entrance and exit are straight. While in case of yellow ones, you have to exit to the left with respect to the edge you entered into the tile. Okay. So this is a solution of this puzzle in the sense that we found the path from the starting point to the destination. But this is not the goal of this game, because the game is called the Explorer, not the shortest path. So instead of finding the shortest possible path between the starting and the finishing positions, we want to find the longest possible path, because our explorer wants to explore as much as possible the checkered board before reaching the destination. So let's try to uh, find a longer path than this one. So instead of starting uh, as we did, we could have started in this way. So starting with a red tile turning to the right. And then I could turn to the right again, then to the left, to the left again. So think of the moves that you can uh, make in order to make uh, the path as long as possible. Now I have to go straight because I have no alternative at this point. Think about it. And uh, I could decide to go straight again and go straight. And then uh, turn left. Turn left. Go straight. Turn right. Hmm. Turn right, and at this point, the only possible move for me is this one. Because if I place this tile, for instance, at this point, 
what happens is that uh, I cannot reach the destination because the destination has to be entered from this edge. And uh, once I place this tile right in front of the entering in the destination, I won't be able to come back here again because this tile is occupying this box forever. Okay, so this means that at this point I have to take the right move, which is this one. And this is a path which is a solution of our game. But I'm not sure whether or not this is the longest possible path. And this is the challenge. So the challenge is to try to find a path which is longer than this one. So if you find a working path like the, the ones that I demonstrated, you are solving the puzzle. So this means that you are bringing the explorer from the, uh, the origin of the game to the destination. But if you are playing a competitive game with another team or with another player trying to find the longest path, a longer path, and the other team finds a path which is longer than yours, then you lose and they win. So be careful. And there is also something else that you have to pay attention to, which is not to get stuck. Because while trying to find the longest possible path, it is quite easy to get stuck. Meaning that uh, you can end up uh, having built a path which prevents you, which prevents you from uh, reaching the destination at all. And in this case, uh, you lose. Okay. Well, at this point, uh, I have to tell you something more about this game and the reason why I consider the Explorer a coding game. It's about uh, colors. The colors that we used are encoding instructions. Let me show you the three colors that we placed along the path, which are yellow, red, and gray. These three types of tiles uh, represent our elementary instructions and all together build an instruction set, which means a minimum set of commands that we can give to a robot in order to guide the robot along the path. In fact, if I take a robot and I can take robots from the same sheet of paper that uh, um, I printed to, to build the checkered board and uh, the, once I cut them along the edges they look like this for instance and I placed one of these small robots uh, on uh, a pencil to be able to move it uh, easily without uh, uh, covering and hiding the checkered board with my hands. So let's take this one and uh, let's see what happens when this robot enters this tile. If the robot finds the yellow footprints, it knows that it has to turn left, then it will move to find another color and another instruction. If the tile has a gray footprints, the robot knows that it has to go straight, while if it finds red footprints, it knows that it has to turn right and then move to the next tile. Okay, so let's see what happens if we use these instructions to let the robot follow the path that we built together. Turn right, turn right, turn left, turn left, go straight, go straight, go straight, turn left, turn left, go straight, turn right, turn right, 
far left destination. So, as you can see, the footprints that the explorer that walks barefoot and leaves colorful footprints along the path, so the color of these footprints are um, basically encoding the instructions that allow a robot to automatically follow the path to reach the destination. That's why this is a coding activity, okay? And uh, I'd like also to show you that uh, if you have no printers or if you, if you don't want to print out this material, you can uh, build it uh, uh, in a pretty simple way just by using your grid and by using directly the, the markers to represent with a triangle the origin of our game, the starting point, with a circle the destination, and then every move can be represented by the proper color in this way. This is for instance star right, but in order to really represent our night, I have also to use an arrow to denote the direction in which uh, this has to be followed or otherwise it will be a third left if I enter it on this side from this side okay then I can for instance uh, go straight turn left turn left again and then uh, turn right Turn left and go straight. And there is another solution, but this was just to show you that there are many different ways of reaching the same destination. So this means that it is not trivial at all to find the longest possible path just because the viable solutions are a lot. Okay, and this is your challenge. And basically, I have two questions to ask you. The first one is uh, if with this starting and uh, finishing positions, uh, it is possible to find a path covering all the boxes in our board. And I have also another question, which is uh, even more challenging. It's uh, if it is possible to find different starting and finishing positions that prevent the explorer from visiting the greatest number of boxes on the board. So what I mean is that you can play this game choosing every time a different starting and finishing position. And depending on the starting and finishing positions that you choose, the longest possible path could be different but I leave this question open for you. And that's it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed and I look forward to meeting you again next time. Goodbye.